I think there's a misconception about football. People think that football is for tough guys. You know, tough guys. Bull Football rewards the guys that are in great condition. That's when you have fun. When you're kicking somebody's ass and they're sucking for win. There was a great coach one time says, fatigue makes cowards of us all. What if I walked up here and said, you're a coward. You're a coward. You wouldn't like it, would you? But that's the reality of it. When you're tired, you make mistakes, you don't do what's right, and your will to win all of a sudden starts to waver just a little bit. You get tired and all of a sudden you don't have that same fight. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. All of us, me included. <laughs> I guarantee you. When I was on a damn TV show and I hadn't had any sleep and I hadn't had any food and I, I, bugs are biting on my ass, hey, I wasn't a big tough guy. I'm saying, what the hell am I doing here? Fatigue makes cowards of us all. If you're in great shape, if you can run like a deer, at the end of the ball game, you're going to be smiling and having fun. And let me tell you something, guys. This is going to be the greatest time in your life. I used to sit in this same ass room. I look at the schedule and I say, God, oh, I can't wait till Oklahoma comes in here. I can't wait till Florida comes in here. I want to kick their ass. And that's what you should feel. This is why you came to Miami. That's why you wanted to be a hurricane. But you can only do it if you're in great shape. And if you're not sucking for win at the end of the game. And when you look across the way and that guy is hanging down. He is a coward. He's a coward because he's tired. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. There's always room for... Don't be tired, people. Amen. Don't be tired. And I can guarantee you that we as fans are sick and tired of not getting there. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Happy Franchise Tag Day. Today, February 20th, we are already in the second week of the offseason, but already teams can start franchise tagging players. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe, but there really is no offseason. And there's rumors out there about Saquon Barkley and the Cowboys. But before we get to that, I just want to enjoy this for a minute because this offseason, the last month, plus has not been any fun it honestly has not been any fun dealing with the shit sandwich that we've been dealing with with this offseason it's been ugly you know some of the emissions by the players where we heard um d law say you know we were tired it was a playoffs a long season i don't want to hear that i, I don't want to hear that um to have jimmy johnson and this is exactly this is the audio clip from Jimmy Johnson discussing his advisory board. And I don't know who else is on the board, but I, I like that for a start. So, so I got to ask, I haven't talked to you since the whole thing in the Ring of Honor and Jerry Jones and and uh, that relationship, which has kind of been back and forth. It was good to see. And, and Jimmy, I think it's probably the first time I can ever remember a guy going in the Hall of Fame way before going to the Ring of Honor. But but that's okay. But I, I thought you were a real pros pro with the whole thing, Jimmy. Well, since the Ring of Honor, Jerry and I, man, I'm on his advisory board now. We're talking on the phone. I, I talked to him about an hour after his Green Bay loss and – you know, he's talking about what all he needed to do because he's got had big decisions on Mike McCarthy and Dan Quinn and Dak Prescott. Uh, so, but everything's hunky dory now. So I'm, 
I'm back in the fold with the Cowboys. Well, I thought it was great. I mean, that's uh, that was pretty cool to see your guys, and I know a lot of your guys been pushing for it openly for a long time, and whatever it is, it, it just feels right in Dallas. It it really does. It was it was great to see. So, Jimmy, I got to ask you. There we go. Now the question is: Is was that just we're having a you know, hour and a half conversation where Jerry Jones is feeling pissed off about his team losing and is in desperation mode, or is this something that's really real? You know, where you, you kind of heard Jimmy Johnson laughing and saying, "You know, I'm part of the advisory board." Is there actually an advisory board, or is this just now we are friends like we used to be and we're going to have conversations? Because if Jimmy Johnson is anything like what we see with some of the great players that we've had, like Charles Haley, that come back through to help mentor the team. And I dare say I would love to have Jimmy Johnson to be mentoring um, Mike McCarthy. In fact, what I would love to see happen is Jimmy Johnson, of course, loves to go fishing. Loves to go fishing. I would love, and I'll sponsor. I, I will sponsor a couple of coolers full of beer, Okay couple coolers full of, I'll buy the bait and everything else. And we get Mike McCarthy to go on, say, a week trip, daily fishing with Jimmy Johnson and a couple of coolers of beer. And they have some conversations about coaching and holding players accountable. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. I don't want no more cowards. I don't want any more cowards. I want guys that are here with the ultimate goal of winning a Super Bowl. It's bottom line. That's that's all that's all we care. I, I don't I don't care about the podcast or you know first take. You know, I I just want a Super Bowl. You do that, then do the other stuff. That's what I want to see, and I want to see players held accountable for when they're tired, when they're making stupid mistakes. That there is ramifications on your future if you screw up. That's what I think they need. I think they need some of that Jimmy Johnson moxie. That foot and ass. That tough love to go forward. Now, back to the franchise tagging. Don't see the Cowboys franchise tagging anybody. Um, if they tagged... Um, Tony Pollard again, it'd be about $12 million. I don't see them spending $12 million on the running back. I talked yesterday about what it would be like if we did bring back Tony Pollard cost-wise and things um, for him, and I don't see the Cowboys doing that. I don't see him getting $10 million or $12 million with the franchise tag. Um, I think his market value would be more like three to four. In fact, I will say... Let me look at Miles Sanders, because I think Miles Sanders, he signed last year, a four-year, I think, $25 million, right? So um, that's about six a year. I can't see, um, can't see Tony Pollard getting more than that. Uh, that's, I mean, this is the facts of life. Now, there is Saquon, there is Derrick Henry, there might be Josh Jacobs. There are a lot of running backs that will be on the market with bigger names, maybe with more miles on them, but bigger names. Now, the thing with Tony Pollard, of course, was he was coming back from the broken leg. You don't know if that slowed him down, and that was part of the reason why his numbers were down, along with the offensive line not quite being there. But the Dallas Cowboys, besides not being cowards and tired, definitely need a running game so here's what we've got from the new york giants they are saying the right things that they want to bring back saquon uh to the team and saquon says he'd like to retire as a um giant but i remember hearing russell wilson say the same thing and then a week later he was traded let's go to the tape NFL's franchise tag window opens today. It's the first day in a two-week window where teams can designate players as franchise players, keep them off the free agent market. And one of the top candidates for the tag, once again, is Giants running back Saquon Barkley. We just saw him recently uh, this weekend, in fact, at the NHL Stadium Series at MetLife Stadium. He was tagged by the Giants last year, so this year it's going to cost them about 
12 million dollars if they want to do it again a lot of uncertainty around this situation but saquon uh, has made it clear he wants to stay he told the new york post during super bowl week quote they know where i want to be Ownership said they want me to be a giant for life, too. Last year, we tried our best at the end. Business happened, and we didn't get it done. So back at the top of the show, we're playing tag or no tag. Mike T said uh, Saquon should not be tagged by the Giants. If he was the Giants, he would not use the tag on Saquon for the second year in a row. Jeff, do you agree with Mike? I do agree with Mike. $12 million suddenly is even richer for running back. Saquon about business last year not being able to get done well unfortunately for the running backs business is no better this year i remember talking to a general manager last offseason talking about how this was going to be the saturated market in 2024 there was no reason to pay running backs last year and it's going to get even more difficult this year so if you're the giants i don't think you look at saquon barkley and say yeah he's he's now earned even more than we were going to give him last year it's to me not going to get done the Giants should simply not tag him, look elsewhere, and see ultimately how this running back market flushes out. Yeah, I mean, obviously we remember last year the running back market was a big story, and it sounds like it will be again, and not in the way yeah. that the running backs wish it would. So look, if he is a free agent, uh, which, which team out there, like if you were a team out there, like who would, you, who would be excited about bringing in Saquon Barkley? Who should pursue him? Roz, this one's easy. It's the Dallas Cowboys. Tony Pollard was mildly disappointing replacing Zeke Elliott. His production went down by about 25%, as Hembo reminded me. So when you're looking at free agency, the first thing you do is say, if we're going to go outside our building, who can we get in the division to help us and hurt our opponent? And trust me, the last thing the New York Giants want to see, if Saquon Barkley graduates this year, is him with a star on the side of his helmet. Could you imagine the first time Dallas rolls into town with Saquon as a cowboy? And he would be perfect because he can catch, he can run. I think his pass protection has actually gotten better. And based on the way Tony Pollard play, I actually think he would improve that position for the 2024 Cowboys. It said there on the, on the bottom, there you go. You're like Buffalo for Saquon? Yeah. With a massive disclaimer, it's about value. And I, I again, mm. I think that running backs are going to come at a great value because of the saturated market. The Bills do need some, somebody to compliment James Cook, and I think Saquon would be awesome at it. But at what cost? I also think the Cowboys. All of these teams make sense. But again, at what cost? I don't see a team overpaying. You saw the graphic up there uh, on the bar there, $14 million for several running backs. I don't think any running back is going to get $14 million for a very long time until it's a guy like Christian McCaffrey again. I just think that the Bills could go get someone like him as long as the cost is, honestly, in a year. Harry's team is the Texans, which has uh, obviously coming off of C.J. Stroud's big rookie year, trying to maximize things around their, their young quarterback. Harry, why do you like Saquon in Houston? Well, number one, you look at the Houston Texans, they have a ton of cap space. And if you're Saquon Barkley, you say to yourself, I'm not going to get uh, I'm not going to have to pay state income tax in the state of Texas as well down in Houston. But you look at how Kristen McCaffrey was used with the San Francisco 49ers. Bobby Slowick came from that Shanahan tree. You talk about a guy that can be a threat out of the backfield as a pass catcher, running H choice, being matched up against linebackers, wheel routes, rail routes down the sideline, being able to do a variety of different things. And you got CJ Stroud for the next three years is only going to count $30 million versus the cap. So I think if you're Houston, you say, you know, our time right now, uh, that window is open. Let's go ahead and try to make a splash and make things happen. And you see there, I put Baltimore just because, I mean, they got the Dobbins and uh, Gus Edwards free. Yeah. They're going to need somebody. But th th like, that's my point. Like, they need somebody. But like, is, is Saquon even the best option out there? W w this running back market that Jeff's talking about, like, you're going to it's a buyer's market, right? You're going to be able to pick whoever you want. Yeah, Graz, yeah. I agree with what Jeff said. I mean, you look at the supply here. It's unbelievable. And a couple of those guys going back a year ago, Dan, Tony Pollard, Saquon, Josh Jacobs, they were all franchised. And you can see paying these guys one year at a time, there's tremendous value. So I, I do think 12 million is really high. Now, look, for the guys that are explosive and, and third down difference makers, like what Pollard should have been, what Saquon right. is, there may be a little bit more value there. 
But I think 12 million is probably the ceiling. I think we're below 10. And I think patience will be well served for these teams to say, I can even get a guy maybe after the draft. Right. And I mean, Jeff, like to your original point, like, like it, it, it's, it's going to be, you're not going to have to overpay to get a guy, but maybe there is a team out there that looks at a specific yeah. running back, like a Derrick Henry or a Saquon, as somebody like, hey, that, he could be really special in our system. Maybe that helps a little bit? Yeah. The, uh, y yes, but this is going to be uh, this is going to be one of the stories of the offseason again. Just like it became that last, it's again where we start to talk about the running backs. And I'm going to leave it right there because here's the thing that's kind of interesting here, and this just kind of opened up to me as I was listening to that because you know there's perception and then there's reality, and you know people will think of Saquon and say, "Oh my God, Saquon." But as I look at the numbers here, let me blow it up a little bit. Here's what's interesting. Um, now, I'm going to say the Cowboys were a better team, and we probably had a better offensive line. But the question you have to ask is, if you're going from Tony Pollard to Saquon, Saquon has had an injury past, much like Tony Pollard has. Um if we look at the raw numbers, they pretty much had an identical year, believe it or not. Rushing attempts, Saquon 247, Tony Pollard 252. Um, so Tony Pollard 1,005 yards, 962 for Saquon. Uh, rushing yards attempt, Tony Pollard is actually a tenth of a yard better. Now some of that's going to be because the Cowboys can open up the field better. And had better quarterback play, which helps. But rushing TDs, six and six. Um, the only spot that Saquon's got him is in receiving yards. And we look at it and say Tony Pollard had a down year. And Tony Pollard coming off of an injury, broken leg. So from this standpoint, as I'm looking at this, I don't know that I'm breaking the bank for Saquon. You can call me crazy. Um, or not, but the question here is, you know, with Saquon, is the health. And uh, I'm not sure that he is the one. I, I think I would rather see Derrick Henry. To me, I think Derrick Henry, though he's had some injuries and things as well, would be more of a bruising style, straight ahead running back. Um, Saquon and Tony Pollard are more of that outside runner that you worry about breaking down. But then again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll. And I appreciate you guys as always. And uh, we will catch you later. Peace out.